Yes. Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church. If you would, please come on in. Have a seat. We'll go over several announcements with you. It's a very special day today as we honor our graduates uh, from high school this morning. Uh, we'll do that at the conclusion of our service. But again, thank you for being here today. Several things I want to draw your attention to. Uh, first of all, tonight, the very special night is our dessert auction. Uh, we have a wonderful time, a fun time with that. We'll have our service here at the beginning, and then we'll go over to the anchor. I want to ask you to bring some of your favorite desserts, most popular desserts that a lot of people like, and come tonight with some money ready to support our students uh, towards camp. Now, let me explain real quickly. The money raised tonight, the students that help with the sports banquet on May 15th and those that have helped previously in other sports banquet, I keep a list of those names and those that help, we divide up the money to those students who help serve. So that goes towards their camp expense. Uh, so letting you know that. So if you come tonight, support them. And then we have FBC's Got Talent on the 23rd. It's going to be a fun night uh, where we have some entertainment here. It won't be just music. There's going to be some comedy. There's going to be some other talents and abilities that are going to be shared with us that night. And uh, what we're doing is $10 suggested donation for those that are 12 and up. Those 11 and under, $5 suggested donation. And uh, you can sign up on the tear-out section of the bulletin and let us know that uh, if you would. Also, the tear-out section there, uh, those that can help with the sports banquet, if you'd let us know that. And then, um, then also, if you're interested in attending the Southern Fried Nuptials at Murray's Dinner Theater on, uh, with the Prime Timers on May 17th, if you'd fill those out, turn it in, let us know. Camp Siloam, we've had some more students register for Camp Siloam this past week. We have more uh, registrations. I opened up five more spots. Uh, we will continue to do so. So right now, I know there's about uh, 17 guys and about seven girls that are going. That's counting the chaperones and everyone. Uh, so we still have room to add more to that. So let us know uh, if you're interested in that, and uh, we'd appreciate it. Okay, this Friday night at 7 p.m. is graduation, and again, we'll be recognizing our graduates here this morning as well. Uh, then also Tuesday at 9 a.m., uh, we unload the food truck at the Outreach Center. If you could help out with that, we'd really appreciate that very much. And then also June 4th, uh, Andy is going to be um, – Andy Hall will be out in the foyer. He's doing the golf tournament again for Options Pregnancy Center. So if you can see him out there for any questions you might have regarding that as well. Thank you for being here. Let's worship together. Would you stand with me, please, today as we begin our service with a moment of silence and praying for our military personnel, our firefighters, our EMTs, our police officers. I want to encourage you to pray for these each day, but particularly today, corporatively, we're praying for them. But not only today, we want to add our graduating seniors. We want to pray that God's grace and God's mercy and God's um, compassion would be with them as they enter into a new phase of their life and look forward with great anticipation of what God is going to do in each of their lives. So bow with me for a moment of, a moment of silence, and then I'll lead us to the Lord in prayer. Father, you're a good, good Father. We give you praise and adoration for who you are and for what you've done in our lives. I, I give you praise and adoration for each of our graduating seniors today. It's been a joy to watch them, many of them from birth to graduation, see them grow physically, spiritually, emotionally. And Father, I pray your richest blessings upon each and every one of them, most importantly, spiritually speaking. I pray that they would always stay true to you and your word, your church. Help them, Lord, to be change agents in this society for the honor and for the glory and for the praise of Jesus. Father, for our military personnel and firefighters, EMTs, police officers, I pray that your hand, would, a hand of protection would be upon them as well and you'd glorify yourself in all that you do. Lord, 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 Lord be with us in our service. I pray that the songs that we sing, the prayers that we pray, the offering that we give, the sermon that is delivered and heard, I pray it to be done all for your glory, for your honor, and for your praise. For we pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Thank you. May be seated. It's good to see you today in God's house. I'm excited about this opportunity. We remind all of our seniors after the service today, we have a luncheon in your honor. We hope that you and your families would stay for that. We look forward to that opportunity to be able to fellowship with you and have that time together. If you're visiting with us today, you're an honored guest. Thank you for coming. Men, please make your way down the aisles. If you're visiting for the very first time, particularly, would you allow one of these gentlemen to give you a guest card? Would you please be so kind to fill it out, put it in the offering plate so that we may have a record of your visit. If you're interested more in First Baptist Church of BB, if you'll indicate that on the card, if you'd like for one of us to come visit you, we'd be glad to do that as quickly as possible. If you'd like to have more information concerning our church, we have a welcome center right outside in the vestibule. We encourage you to stop by there. We've got a packet of material that we'd love to give you. But I'm excited about this time of worship. I hope that you're excited about this time of worship as well. And I'm going to ask that at this time that we just stand and greet one another, welcome one another to God's house. Stand with me, please. Thank you. As you make your way back to your seat, you may be seated. It's so good to, again to have you here. It's time now for our ushers, if you'll come forward, please, to receive our morning offering. Irvin Carter actually is in drill today, so he can't be our deacon of the week, but Keith LaCrosse is going to come and lead us to the Lord in prayer. Brother Keith. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for this day, dear Lord. We just thank you for the opportunity that we have to be in your house, dear Lord. We just ask that you'd be with Brother Bob today as he brings the message, Lord. We just ask you to anoint him and give him the words to say, dear Lord. We ask, too, that you be with this offering that we're going to take up. Bless those that have to give and those that don't, Lord, and let us use this offering for your glory. In your precious name, amen.
As we get ready to uh, sing praises this morning, uh, all these, all three of these songs, I think everybody is is familiar with. So, uh, just uh, please feel free to to join with us as as we sing, and uh, uh, we'll just have a have a wonderful time of worship this morning. And 
Thank you, Carla. Wonderful, wonderful job. I don't think it's coincidental, coincidental seniors that that song was sang at this particular time. I think you need to understand your life is not your own. Amen? I prepared this sermon particularly for you, though everyone in the congregation needs to hear, I believe, what God is facing us today. Every day we are faced with numerous choices. We have a decision to make almost every single day. So, some of those decisions and some choices that we make are clear. Some of them we find that the Bible speaks directly to. However, there are some decisions that we make and some choices that we make that the Bible may not have a direct answer. Example, God's not going to say or God has not written in your Bibles to go to Washington Baptist University. 
He has not written in your Bibles that you have an obligation to go to ASU. He has not written in your Bibles that you ought to go to college or technical school, period. But these are all decisions that you have to make. And I believe that we have in the Bible some biblical principles in decision making. So today, I want us to look, begin to look today and maybe have to go into the night, say, well, preacher, I can't come back tonight. That is a decision that you must make. Remind you, particularly members of First Baptist Church of B.B. Arkansas, that you will give an account of these things that we speak about tonight, even if you're not here. I just, out of curiosity to our seniors, let me speak to you just for a second. How many of you were exempt from some semester tests this last semester? One, two, th- all of you. I hated people like that. They <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, your, your tests are finally over. No more tests. You're, you're, you're now your own man, your own woman, and nobody's going to tell you what to do. Do you believe that? No. Decisions. I, I want you to take your Bibles. It's not in the outline. I, I, added, I, added, that, I added that this morning, so probably won't be on the screen. I want to take your Bibles, and I want you to follow along. Most of you probably do not have an international children's Bible, and, and I generally don't preach out of that. I re- generally either preach out of the King James or the New King James Version, but I want you to follow along, and I want you to listen, particularly seniors, what the Bible is saying to you concerning wisdom, and following God's direction in your life. Listen, my sons, to a father's discipline, and pay attention so that you may gain understanding. For I'm giving you good instructions. Don't abandon my teaching. When I was a son with my father, tender and precious with my mother, he taught me and said, your heart must hold on to my words. Keep my commandments and live. Listen particularly at verse 5 and on. Get wisdom. You don't get wisdom from college. You don't get wisdom from books. You get wisdom from God. You understand? He he says in verse 5, get wisdom, get understanding. Don't forget or turn away from the words of my mouth. Don't abandon wisdom and she will watch over you. Wisdom, listen to this in verse 7, wisdom is supreme. Get wisdom and whatever whatever else you get, get understanding. Cherish her. She will exalt you. If you embrace her, she will honor her. She will place a garden of grace, a garland of grace uh, on your head, and and she will give you a crown of beauty. Get wisdom. Learn to discern your wisdom based upon the authority, listen closely, of the Word of God. I heard about a high school graduate that decided that he would seek counsel from a wise, friendly, godly old man who everybody in the church loved and respected. They looked upon this man. He was successful in everything that he's done. You've seen people like that. That seems as if whatever they touch turns to gold. He was a man of very few words. This young man had the bravery, the whatever it took to go to him to seek counsel upon graduation. The conversation went something like this. Remember now, the man of few words. Uh, The young man looked at this man and said, Sir, what is the secret to your success? The older man looked at him and said, Two words. Pause, and the young man didn't know what to do, so he looked at the, the older man and said, Well, what are those two words? The old man looked at him and said, right decisions but but how, the young man but but how do you make those right decisions the old man looked at him and said one word paul's looking back come on now let's get into conversation help me and what is that one word and what is that one word that will help me make wise decision and the older man said 
experience. The young man still somewhat confused and he looked at the older man and said, and how do you get experience? The older man responded, two words. And sir, almost in anger, what are those two words? He said, wrong decisions. You know, wrong decisions, and I'm not justifying those. Words. We don't have to make wrong decisions. We, we can get on the course if we follow God's word. We can get on the course, and we can always make godly decisions. So what I want to talk to you about this morning, and partly, probably tonight, I want to talk to you about 10 principles that help you make right decisions in your life, and I want you to understand that the final exams are not over. One day, there will be a final exam, and you will not be exempt. God will be the instructor, and God will be the teacher. And the Scripture says, one day, we will all stand before Him. If we're going to stand before Him and make, if you, if you and I are going to stand before Him, then, then you and I need to learn to make right decisions rather than wrong decisions. So, Let's begin. Number one, what biblical principles, write that down in your outline, what biblical principles, principles inform my decisions? You will notice as, we, as you look in your outline, you will notice as I bring God's Word to you that, that oftentimes I will quote or I will read Proverbs. I've said it many, many times from this pulpit. Billy Graham has said that he read a chapter in the book of Proverbs every single day that corresponded to the day of the month. The first, he had read one and two. And so, and, and I think if Billy Graham needed to read the Proverbs for wisdom and life, how much more do you and I need to learn to read the Proverbs? How much more do you and I need to learn the wisdom of God? I want you to notice, look with me in Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 6. You have it in your outline. I, I have it there so that you will do some deeper study on this. Notice what he says, For the Lord gives wisdom... From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Did you know, seniors, that God speaks to you? I know he speaks to me quite frequently. I'm thankful that he speaks to me. He, he, he begins speaking to me, first of all, when I come to that place in my life that I realize that he spoke to me and I realized I was a sinner and that I needed to be saved. And by faith, I gave him my heart as Lord and Savior in my life. For the Lord gives wisdom. Not any other person. You know this verse, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. You know that by heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. These are biblical principles that inform our decision making. Other words, others, that, and I could choose literally thousands, others that I, I want you to see today, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. So whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Whatever you do in life, whether you go to college, whether you go to technical school, or whether you go to work, do it all for the glory of God. Amen? I said Amen. Well, we need to learn that, that, that every decision that we make in life is a, not a material decision, but a spiritual decision. And every decision that we make needs to be founded upon the principles and precepts of God's Word. Listen closely. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. What does this have to do with biblical decision making? Listen to what the Scripture says. This is not Brother Bob. This is not Baptist thought. But listen to what God says. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. As far as I know, none of you married. When you begin to think that way, the Scripture is very clear that believers should marry believers. Uh, be, be, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? So, so we need to understand the principle that God wants us, not only in our marriage, but God wants us to be around fellow believers. It's not saying that we should not have people in our lives that are lost, that do not know Christ as Lord and Savior of our life, but primarily you and I need to walk with those who believe Christ as Savior. Listen to this principle. Proverbs 22, 7. I can imagine every 
uh, adult could testify that they had their life to live over again. They, they, they would maybe apply this principle. Listen, the rich rule over the poor and the borrower becomes the lender's slave. You're, you're going to begin to get, can I give you some practical advice? Go like this. Because I'm fixing to give, I'm picking to the seniors because I'm going to give it to you anyway. Listen to what he said. Uh, you're going to begin to get in, in, the, in the mail numerous companies that want you to get a credit card. And the, and, the, and the desire or the temptation is going to be, all I've got to do is pull this out of my pocket and cha-ching, I can get whatever I want. Listen, one day the bill is going to come in. Don't fall into that trap. Don't fall into that trap. It's going to hurt you. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you. It's going to hurt you, and it's going to hurt you tremendously. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is become the lender's slave. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 is a good principle to live by. Listen to this. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is a good report, if there be any excellence, if there be anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. You want to know what to think about in life. You don't think about all these trivial things that one will one day will pass away, but you think about what is true and honorable, what is right and pure and holy. You, you, you have some questions in your outline. I, I'm not going to read through those, but you have some questions in your outline that, 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 may, be, that may help you in making that decision. So the very first, uh, 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 very first principle is, is what biblical principles do I have to inform my decisions? Listen, listen, always trust God's Word. Amen? Now, you, take, you can't trust God's Word unless you know God's Word. So let me tell you something. The temptation, listen, this is what studies have shown, that one, only one out of ten of you are going to be in worship services five years from now, about four years from now when you graduate from college. I don't know about you, but that breaks my heart. That absolutely crushes me. And uh, we, we can begin to blame, we can begin to play the blame game. It's the church's fault. It's my parents' fault. Well, 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 in reality, listen closely, young people. I'm trying to preach the word to you. In reality, it's not your mom and daddy's fault. It's not the church's fault. Because in reality, when you stand at the final exam, it's not going to be you and your daddy and God. You and your mom and God. You and your wife and God. It's going to be you and God. Ultimately, you pay for your decisions. Yes, you can choose not to be back at church tonight. Yes, you can choose not to get involved. Well, my mom and dad made me go for the last 18 years. I'll show them. Let me tell you something. You're not showing them anything, and you're not here for mom or dad. You're here for God. You need to understand one day you will stand before him. And I don't want to be, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to throw water on your fire, your excitement of graduating, your excitement of the baccalaureate service this afternoon, graduation service on Friday. But I, I, I want to speak reality. Would you listen very closely? I have five seniors here today. One of you, I'm not, I'm not trying to scare you, but one of you is going to be the first one to die from that five. It may be 60 years from now. It may be before graduation night. So you had better be ready in your decision making. And to be ready in your decision making, you're based upon the Word of God. The, the, the second principle that I want you to see in, this, in biblical decision making is number two, do I have all the facts? Uh, there's been people, including myself, who have made decisions without really looking at all the facts. Look with me in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 13. He who gives an answer before he hears, it is folly and shame to him. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 17. The first to plead his case seems right until another comes and examines, examines him. 
I, I'm, I'm not talking about all the facts of what's the best car or what's the best vocation. I'm talking about the facts of God's Word. You understand what I'm saying? What, what does the Bible have to say about these issues? I think in, in, in surfacing and bringing to light all the facts, we, that there's some questions that, that we must ask and, and ask a lot of questions. Don't, don't pray fall to wishful thinkings. Don't, don't let your emotions get the best of you. Remember that there's always two sides to every story. Every story. And listen, when there's two sides to every story and they're diametrically opposed, Follow God. Follow God. If you follow God, you'll never go wrong. He will always protect you. He will always be by your side when you're following what, him, what, what He would have you do. Number three, write it there in your outline. Remember that there's going to be a final exam. I'm not going to give it to you tonight. And it don't make any difference what you make to me, but there's going to be a final exam. It Number three, is the pressure of time forcing me to make a premature decision? Hey, not, I know you have it, teenagers. Some of the adults have been in a sales pitch that the guy or the gal is saying, you've got to make a decision now. I'm trying to sell you a car. I'm trying to sell you a truck, a boat, a house. Oh, Mr. Hall, you don't understand the, the importance of making a decision now. I have found just about every time I make a decision, now it's the wrong decision. And I try to say, I don't always do this, but I try to say I can't make that decision now because I, I've got someone that I've got to report to. They say, well, your wife won't mind. I say, no, no, no you, you're not understanding. I'm not necessarily talking about her, though we make decisions together. I, I, I've got to report to God. You understand what I'm saying? Well, we, we need to find out in life that as we travel through life that, that we can't make decisions from uh, make a premature decision. Listen, Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 2. Also, it is not good for a person to be without knowledge and he who, may, he who makes haste with his feet errs. Anytime you make a decision quickly, there's a, at least 50-50 chance that it's going to be wrong. Proverbs 21 and verse 5, The plans of the diligent lead surely to advantage, but everyone who is hasty, excuse me, everyone who is hasty comes surely to poverty. Could, 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 I, could I beg you? Could I plead with you, seniors? I mean, I'm seriously getting down on my knees and begging you that when you make decisions, pray earnestly about it. I mean, seek God with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind and all of your strength. And I promise you this, if you're seeking God with all that you are, you will be surprised how good God can make it. Oh, but sir. Oh, but ma'am. This is a once-in-a-lifetime deal. Well, if it's a once-in-a-lifetime deal, I might better pass it up. We, we, we don't make hasty decisions. We make decisions based upon the Word of God. Number four, what, what possible motives are driving my decisions? Oh, well, you, 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 for the 18, last 18 years, maybe your mom and dad have made you go to church. But, but aren't you thankful today that they made you go to school? Because had your mom and dad not made you go to school, you would not be walking in the line today, this, this coming week. Uh, we, we didn't understand that what are the motives and, and, and the motives that, that we have for, for coming to the house of God, the, the motives that I have for reading the Word of God is one and one alone for the honor and for the glory and for the praise of Jesus. Remember that scripture I read in the biblical principles of forming my, informing my decisions? Whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. You continue here and you teach in a water program, do it for the glory of God. You go work at the outreach center, do it for the glory of God. You choose to help Miss Diane or Miss, uh, Miss Jerry at Chrissy's house, Miss Diane, and celebrate recovery. If you help them there, do it for the glory of God, not for a pat on the backs. 
It's easy that we want people to pat us on the back for what we've done, but do it for the honor and for the glory and for the praise of the, uh, of the Lord Jesus. In Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 2, all the ways of a man are clean in his own sight, but the Lord weighs the motives. Wow. You see, God, listen closely. The God whom we serve not only knows what you speak, listen closely, he knows what you think. He knows the real you. He knows the deepest precepts of your heart. The Lord weighs the motives. Again, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 9, who can say, I have cleansed my heart, I am pure, from my sin. I, I, I've talked to people that have told them that, you know, in, in presenting the gospel, when I'm, when I'm out witnessing, the, the very first thing in order to bring a person to real saving faith in Jesus Christ is they've got to understand that they're a sinner, right? And until they come to understand that they need God, then, then they never invite God. I, I've talked to people that, that obviously, at least in my eyes, had all kind of sin and all kind of shortcomings in their life, and they looked at me and they have said, Brother Bob, I have never sinned. I did one time, one lady told me one time that she had never seen, I'm not, I'm not judging the wrongness of it, but she was smoking a cigarette, she had a beer, she had already told me that she had a baby out of wedlock, and she said, I have never seen. I stuck my hand out and said, I'd like to shake your hand. She said, why do you want to shake my hand? I said, I've never shook hands with a perfect person before. I wasn't trying to be mean. Scripture says, listen, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. The, the, the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. The, the Bible says that, that all of us have sin in our life. Uh, who can say, I have cleansed my heart, I am pure from all sins? L look at the questions. Acknowledge. I've got that you have blind spots. Acknowledge that you have weaknesses. Every one of us have them. Some of them, it may be drugs, other may be alcohol, some might be sex, some might be food. All of us have weaknesses. We've got to acknowledge our blind spots. I, I honestly, assess, uh, uh, assess our motives, both good and bad, and give others permission to speak to you. Give others permission in your life to say, hey, pastor, hey, brother, what you're doing, maybe you need to reconsider. Scott taught us and played the man this morning and such a wonderful lesson. I, I, I would encourage, listen closely, this is just free. If you're a, a dad and you've got young children, next to your Bible, you need to have that book, Play the Man. You need to understand your responsibility and training your children up in the way of God. I'm thankful for our church. I'm thankful for our Sunday school classes. I'm thankful for our children's workers. I'm thankful for, for, for our want to work. I'm thankful for, for the lives that men and women through the years have poured into the life of Joshua and Andy and Hannah. But basically the responsibility to make sure that they come to spiritual maturity lies right here. That I would teach them the principles and the precepts of God's Word. I've made plenty of mistakes. One of the things I've found in making mistakes in life, I've got to be brave enough and honest enough to say to them, I'm sorry. I remember one time we was fixing to go on a vacation. Margaret had Joshua and Andy and Hannah. We had that raised roof van. Y'all remember that one? Had a TV in it. Was trying to buy some movies. Y'all, I've told you this before, but trying to buy some movies for them to watch from here to Gulf Shores. That's around the little movie bin, and Andy said, Mama, Mama, liar, liar. She grabbed him by the ear, started twisting that ear, said, Don't you ever call me a liar, boy. No, 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 Mama, let go. It's not my ear. It's the movie, liar, liar. And sometimes I have to say, I'm sorry. Shouldn't have grabbed your ear. You know, I found in life that when I was, when I was smaller, when I was being raised, 
I, I confess this this morning and I'll play the man. Uh, my dad demanded, my dad demanded, there was no debate, there was no discussion, demanded that I and my other brothers and sisters respected people. That is, we said Mr. and Mrs., yes, sir, and no, sir. There's no question to ask. I mean, it was just absolutely certainty in life. And, and another thing is the adult was always right. Do you get that? The adult was always right. And I found looking back in my life, I can say that every situation that ever come in my life, the adult was always right, except for one time. And I figured that I got away with so many other things, I didn't say anything there, and was too scared to say anything back then to admit anything there. Give people permission. Ask people. Ask. The Bible says that iron sharpeneth iron in the book of Proverbs. Ask a few men, close friend, men friends in your life. Women, ask a few close women friends in your life to keep you sharp for God. Number five, how should past, exper how should past experiences inform my decision making? Now listen closely. I'm afraid in the work of the church today we have a lot of people saying, well, my past experience tells me this. We've always done it this way, preacher. Well, listen, if we've always done it this way and it's not working, does it not seem logical to do something else? I'm not, I'm not saying to, to, to get away from biblical principles, but, but we, need to, we need to, yes, let, let, let experience be a, a great teacher for us. But listen to what Proverbs says in Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 11. Like a dog that returned to its vomit is a fool who repeats his folly. How many times as a believer have you gone to God in prayer and said, God, please forgive me? I, I know I said this same thing last week, but God... Please forgive me. You know how foolish that is that we keep on going? Not, not, not that we keep on confessing, but we keep on doing the things that displease God. We will learn from our experience that, listen, listen closely. Wrong is always wrong and right is always right. I hear a lot of talk, religious talk on the millennials. To be, be honest with you, I get so sick and tired of hearing the, the millennial talk and the Generation X talk and all these different generations and how that we've got to do anything, how, how that we've got to do things differently. I tell you what the millennials need, and I tell you what Generation X need, they need a good dose of the preaching of God's word. That they need a good dose of preaching that when you make a wrong decision, payday is someday. They need a good dose of, of, God's, uh, of God's word that wrong is always wrong. You may justify it in your eyes, but if it was wrong 2,000 years ago, it's still wrong today. If it were wrong 200 years ago, it's still wrong today. We need a good dose of the experience of God's word. Learn from the experiences of others. Learn from Job. Learn from Daniel. Learn from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Well, preacher, you know, you really can't. It's what they say. Uh, you know, I just want to experience life. I want to go out and have fun. I just want to do things. I just got to learn it on my own. Are you really serious? H have you even thought about that logically? Several years ago, probably about 15 years ago, there was a lady in our community about two blocks from me, the train track, thought that she could beat the train across the tracks with the arm down and the train hit her. I can learn from her experience. When, when, when I get tempted to go across the tracks, I mean, we may be going across the track and all of a sudden our car dies. And I can't call the mechanic. I don't have time to call American Auto to come get me off. I don't have that time. I've got to be ready then. We learn from other people's experience. We should learn from our experience. 
Proverbs chapter 17, verse 10, a, re a rebuke goes deeper into one who has understanding than a hundred blows of a fuel. Did you hear that? A rebuke goes deeper into one who has understanding than a hundred blows of a fuel. Of a fuel. I've, I've had people rebuke me and sometimes when they rebuke me, it makes me bad. But then maybe I might begin to think about it and think about it and study about it and pray about it. And I find that their rebuke was correct. And I think there's a way to make rebukes and there's a way not to make rebukes. But we need to be true to God in making the decision. How should my past experiences inform my decision? Our past experiences, just like every other thing, informs our decisions based upon what does God say in His Word. Today, we've seen five of ten biblical principles. Tonight, we will see five more. But I wonder, before we have a brief time of recognizing our seniors, I wonder if you'd stand with me for just a moment with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. Brother Nick, we won't sing, but Miss Janet, would you just come play? Maybe there's a decision that you need to make. Maybe, maybe God's dealt with you this morning about uh, whatever it might be. Would, would you like to make that decision for the honor and for the glory and for the praise of Jesus? Just a few moments. We're not going to give you long. Thank you. You may be seated. Brother Clark, would you come with this presentation for our seniors that we have this morning? Um, this is again for our, um, it just seemed like it was just last week we did this for our graduates last year, but we're going to go into this time where our five graduates, and I've asked them if they would stand up in order here in the, in the aisle based on the um, program. And uh, our Sunday school teachers, if you would, um, I believe Melanie and Chris, if you would come up here, please, to present our gifts to them. When I call out your name, if you would, you'll come up here and just stand right here. And at the end, I have a word of prayer with you. But let me just say this. There's some things I'm going to share with you. I've asked them to share some of their special memories uh, of their time here at First Baptist Church. I'm going to share a couple of thoughts uh, as well with them And uh, as we share that. Again, it's so... Um, Humbling and an honor to have you here. We've got special memories with all of you at different occasions that I'll mention. Uh, but thank you, church, for all that you've done. Let me go ahead and ask you to do this. If you taught any of these students in Sunday school, Awana, preschool, any, would you stand where you're at? I just want, if you've, any of these at any time in their time here at First Baptist, would you stand if you would? Give them a hand. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Is there any college students, before I recognize our high school student, you just graduated college this year. Would you stand? Are you in here? All right. Great. 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 Thank you so much. Well, at this time, what we want to do is honor our graduates, and if you call your name, go ahead and come up here. Riley Bell graduated from BB High School and plans on attending Arkansas State University in BB majoring in business and becoming an accountant. Okay. And she recently got hired at the bank to start work, right? That's great, that's great. Here's some memories from Riley she shared. She said, I was raised, saved, and baptized in this church. 
Brother Bob, Brother Clark, and Miss Nita will always hold a special place in my heart. FBCBB will always be my home. We love you, Riley. Thank you. Okay. All right. Noah Goff graduated from BB High School and will attend the University of the Ozarks. He plans on majoring in history and becoming a teacher coach. He's good job, Noah. <laughs> His special memories is Brother Bob giving him gum as a child. <laughs> and um, that's right. Joshua Michael Lofton graduated from BB High School and will be attending Arkansas State University in BB in the fall. He plans to major in fine arts. <laughs> Autumn O'Rourke graduated from BB High School and will be attending Williams Baptist College. She plans on majoring in early education and becoming a kindergarten teacher. The memory she shared was uh, videoing Brother Clark breakdancing at rescue. <clears throat> it has gone public, I have been aware. Um, uh, Annabelle Stout graduated from BB High School and plans on attending Arkansas Tech University in Russellville this fall. Her major will be broadcast journalism and she plans on becoming a news anchor. And some of her special memories is Super Summer for six years, uh, Nebraska mission trip for four years, and skiing in Colorado. And those are all special, special times that we've had together there. I would just say this, as I look at the five graduates we have here, I look at um, uh, Riley and Noah and uh, Annabelle, our times on a mission trip that's meaningful. I, I look at also some Camp Siloam uh, times with Noah and some other trips. One of the memories I have with uh, Joshua is, and he don't know this, don't want to embarrass you, but my office is right by where they would lead in Vacation Bible School, the children's music, and I would hear you singing in my office. And I didn't embarrass you, but I would hear you, and you did an awesome job. So that, those are special, special memories that I have there, okay? All right. Um, but again, special time with all of these students, and uh, we love you. And I want to pray with you now, and then we will, you'll have a seat, and we'll see a wonderful video of some pictures I've never seen before. So let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for each of these students. And Lord, I pray that you'd bless them in a very special way as they go from here Lord, uh, this chapter of their life is ended, but God, I've been told many times that true life begins now, and uh, God, help them to learn uh, and to apply the principles that they've been taught. Help them to go out and make a difference in this world for your glory, to shine the light in the darkness. Again, watch over them, protect them, and thank you for this church that has meant so much to them. And we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's, let's watch this video.